Hello, Internet. I'm Guy. I went around my workshop and dug out all of my calipers, and I'm surprised to find how many I have. I definitely have some favorites and some that I dislike. Uh, this one is in full-time retirement at the back of a drawer somewhere, so we'll get that out of the way. This one is rarely used, but primarily used for setting the height of my table saw blade and router bits on my router table, so it's not used very often, but I like it. I like the eye gauging projects a lot. These two <coughs> I am using less because they have the smaller uh, button size battery, which die very often, and they don't have auto power off, so they end up dying often. And the most annoying part is when the battery is low, they blink, so don't like those so much either. So now we're down to my three favorites. Um, this is the Mitu Toyo that I've had for a long time. It's a good solid stainless steel, as they all are, um, fractional inches and millimeters. And I use it a lot to find hole sizes for uh, fractional drills. This is a great tool. It's one of my favorites, definitely. Uh, now I have two eye gauging calipers. That What I like about them is they take a much bigger battery. So this is the CR2032 large coin cell battery. And they have auto power off and the battery life is much, much better. And of course it has inches, fractional inches and millimeters like they all do these days. So what this video is about, as you can tell from the thumbnail, is uh, figuring out how to measure the depth of something. So I've got this little item here that's a product that I've found recently. And if I wanted to measure the depth of this with my regular gauge here, of course, you know, I, it's, I can't really get to the bottom there. It just is not going to work. So one trick you can do is take something like a parallel, set this up like that, zero it. So now you've got the zero reading. Set this down here, set it on there like that, and that is your actual depth right there because I've already zeroed it to remove this from the thickness calculation here. Now, the ideal way to do this, in my mind, let me just re-zero that, is to have a depth base. So you'd put the depth base on like this. This is the one that I made in the video, and you'll see this shortly how I made it. Set it up like that on a flat surface, tighten this down, and now you can just go straight in there and measure that depth. So this is a great tool, and it's really useful to have. Um, there are other ones that are commercially available. For instance, Mitutoyo have one for over 50 bucks, and I'm not going to spend that if I can make one. Eye gauging have one for under 20 bucks. Uh, I didn't like it, but I kind of copied it a little bit here, just used it as a design reference. And then, of course, there are a whole bunch of other depth gauges that range from 22 to well over $100, just standard depth gauges, the entire part. And uh, I don't need to spend the money on that either. So join me on my little quick journey here on how I made this little part here. I'm going to find this really helpful and useful going forward here. And I made this beautiful little brass knob for it too. Very simple. So stick with me and you'll see how I made it. I found this chunk of steel at the local metal supply store and it, it's big enough in this axis here. These are inches. So it'll be just over three inches when I machine it down. So I'm just going to cut off a section right here and start machining this shape. So let's true up that cut and make it all pretty. So I have it all blued up and marked up. Um, what I have here is the channel here that the gauge will drop into. This is going to be the area that will be cut out. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is machine out this channel here that the caliper will fit into, and then I'm going to relieve this area out completely for the uh, back side of the, the caliper that has the little bumps and fixtures on it. So let's see, let's lube it up a little bit. Okay, that's cut to depth, so now what I need to do is open it up a little bit. So I've got to come out a little bit on the left and quite a bit on the right. Okay, checking my dimension here. I'm looking for a 0.625. Eh, overshot just a little bit there. But let's look at the fit here. That's the important part. So if I just drop that in there, oops, clean off some of those filings. That is quite fine. So when a screw comes in here and locks it in, that's going to be just what I want. Just a tiny bit of movement there. Off camera, I brutalized this cutout with an angle grinder. It was just the quickest way to get her done. And so now I'm going to clean up to these lines here and open up that corner. A little chamfering never hurt anybody. So, post-mortem, here's what happened. The chuck on my keyless chuck came off the MT2 taper in there, and of course this is the R8 collet, and I really should not have been using a carbide bit in a taper, and so it wrecked the bit, it wrecked my vise. That was embarrassing. And now I know to, to do better, so what I had to do now is sort of grind off that corner and this corner here just to make it look nicer because it got chewed up by that cutter head as it was coming down. Uh, lesson learned, I guess. So now I'm going to be drilling a hole in here for the set screw. This will be a, a number 440. So I'm just going to start with a spotting drill and just touch it in there just to get a centering hole for the uh, tap drill size for a number 440 screw. Drill that in there. By the way, I lost live audio, so I'm sorry you can't hear the sound of machines in the background. So using a 440 tap to tap that in. And then I'm just going to chamfer it a little bit using a spotting drill just to chamfer that surface. So this is the 440 bolt and what I'm now going to do is make a brass head that will press fit onto there. So here we are on the lathe, cleaning up the end as one does. And again, spotting drill to get a centering drill hole there for starting the hole. And I'm going to drill it out to just under the size of that cap screw so that it can press fit in there. Okay, drilling in that out to depth. And so now I have that cap screw in the chuck on my tailstock and I'm just turning the crank handle to crank that in, basically using it like a press to press fit that uh, screw head right into the brass. I'm going to leave it just a little bit proud and you'll see when I release the chuck in a moment that it's gone in almost all the way. So there it is, set in just slightly proud just so it has a little clearance. 
I'm putting some 30 weight oil on my knurling tool now, and so I'm going to knurl the whole knob, tightening it down very slowly, incrementally. Since this is a uh, rod stock that has a fixed diameter of half inch, the knurling tool lines up really nicely on that. So now I'm just incrementing along a little bit to have a little bit of depth on the knurling section there. And I'm just going to chamfer the front edge or the left edge of that a little bit before I cut this off. Going in there with the parting tool and starting the parting, but then I'm going to take a break and chamfer the cut before I take it all the way off. So here's the chamfering cut. And back to the parting tool because parting is such sweet sorrow. Parting brass is so easy. You can just keep turning that handle slow and steady. And if you could hear it, it's making that weird squealing sound that you get from a parting tool in brass. And there she goes. If you're enjoying the video, please remember to give me a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to stay in touch with my videos. So here's the finished depth base. I think it looks pretty nice. That little cutout there is perfect for the, uh, the little parts on the bottom of the calipers. So you can see it just drops right in there. This is the eye gauging one and settle it out, tighten the knob and there it is. I can take a measurement right to the bottom of that hole, no problem. <music>